Welcome to episode 82 of the Daniel Yoris podcast. What to do after you've hit your fitness goals. Let's go. Hello, hello. Welcome back to another episode. Thank you for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. Every single time, it's not lost on me that you're taking the time for the next mm, 20, 30, or 40 minutes to spend listening to me. So thank you very much. Hope you're having a great day. And uh, let's get into it. We got video. We're comfortable. We're ready to rock and roll. And uh, not a whole lot of other housekeeping or anything else that I've got to go over. That's right. So the topic that we're, and by we, I mean me, topic I'm going to talk about today is something that is not often spoken about and because it's not that obvious. So, you know, you heard the title, you heard the intro talking about what to do after you reach your goals. And some of you might think, well, I haven't reached my goals yet, so this is completely irrelevant for me. And some of you might think, well, I'll never reach my goals. So why would, how does this matter? What do you mean after you reach your goals? So the way to start this off, the way this episode will roll, first, I'm going to just define what I mean by that. Then I'm going to tell a quick story about how I really started to think about all of these things. And then I'll give some suggestions as to how to go about all of this. Now, as far as what does it mean to hit your fitness goals? We all set goals and we all talk about like, I got to hit my goals, I got to hit my goals. And there's never this talk about, well, what happens after that? Now, the reason for that is because most of us never actually hit our initial goals. And that can be okay because goals can change. What I mean by after you hit your fitness goals is what happens, or sorry, the first reason that you step into the gym. For many people, it can be quite a simple reason, although there's usually a deeper reason underneath but it can be something as simple as I wanted to lose 10 pounds. I wanted to learn how to bench press. I wanted to learn how to do a squat. I wanted to help my knee pain, et cetera, et cetera. Now that's very obvious for most of us and very tangible. And you know, you, you go to the gym, you lose the 10 pounds and then what, and then what happens after that? Now we know that fitness has to be a forever thing, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it. Fitness is not a a 12-week program. It's not a six-month diet. It's not a one-year transformation. Fitness is a now-until-forever thing. And so we've got to find ways to make it a now-and-forever thing. What do you do after you've lost those 10 pounds? How do you continue to go to the gym? How do you continue to goal set? How do you continue to make this part of your life when it's not something that you really love? So... What just happened with the light back there? See this video stuff? Nah, that's okay. It turned on. It's all good. We're, we're, we're fine right now. Hashtag influencer. <laughs> the story that I, that I want to tell, there's, there's a gentleman that I used to train years ago. Uh, we'll call him B. He was a university professor. He taught game theory, which is pretty interesting. And he was someone who had never been to the gym before, um, didn't really play sports, didn't grow up as a really an active kid. He wasn't overweight. He was just very weak, um, didn't really have any connection to his body and wanted to, you know, start to start to get stronger, start to feel a little bit healthier. He realized uh, that, you know, it had to be part of his life, but wanted some help, et cetera, et cetera. Great guy. Had some really interesting conversations with him, a little bit of a, a little bit of a strange character if I'm, if I'm being honest, but a uh, really, really nice guy. After three or four months of training, it came time to just talk about his renewal of his session. So however many sessions it was that he had purchased initially, we had run through those and, you know, time to, to buy more sessions. And so in that conversation, along with all the assessment stuff that happens with that, he said to me, and, and this is something that really, this is the, the start of this. This is from years ago and it's come up in multiple times since then, but he looked at me and let me, let me just preface this by for one second. He had done amazing. He had made a lot of progress, but by a lot of progress, I mean someone who had never exercised, never gone to the gym to after those few months, we were squatting the bar plus a very small amount of weight, which is not impressive by any standards. It's not like, oh my God, okay, this guy's squatting like 500 pounds or anything like that. Now it's, there's no competition. It's a you versus you, blah, blah, blah. I get it. But it's not like to say that he was doing something magnificent. He looked at me in this conversation. He said to me, I've been working out. This is really amazing, but I'm stronger than I've ever been in my entire life. I'm in the best shape of my life. What do I do now? What do we even do from here? And at the time, it really caught me off guard because I was like, in my head, I'm like, well, B, you know, you just started squatting the bar. Like, 
next step would be adding a little bit more weight, continue to refine the movement and learn some new exercises and introduce a whole host of other things as I'm running through my head. And, you know, when a question kind of stuns you like that, you don't give a, an immediate answer because it deserves some thought because the question took some thought and some courage to even ask that question. And so, you know, we talked about setting some more goals and it led into a whole different discussion, but it really, it really caught me off guard and it makes a lot of sense. Someone like myself, I obviously enjoy exercise. It is a part of my life. It's obviously my job and it's not something that I really have to like think about. I I never have to think about, oh, I'll just stop going to the gym for a while. Like that's not something that crosses my mind, but to someone who had never been part of this fitness world, if you will. It was a genuine question. What do I even do from here? And in my head, the, you know, the snarky answer was like, well, we just keep getting stronger for forever. Like you're not the strongest man in the world. And even if you were, you just keep going forever. Like there's no, there's no end to this. And so you can't say that because that's obviously not, not a, not a real answer, not a helpful answer, but those are the thoughts that crossed my mind initially. So it, it brought to this whole point, And this has come up multiple times with many other clients over the years, not, not as direct questioning as that, but kind of like, okay, like good. We, we, you know, we hit that initial goal. I I'm down 10, 15, 20 pounds. Like we said, we would be, I hit these goals, X, Y, Z. What do we do now? Like what's next and how do we keep this going for forever? Now, again, unfortunately or unfortunately fitness is not a one and done thing. It is now until forever. Now, we know that we need to keep up with it forever. We, we at least know that in our head to some degree, but it's not always easy to do that. The good news is that it's much easier to maintain what you've built than it is to build up initially, especially if you're starting from essentially nothing or really anywhere you start. It doesn't actually matter. Whatever you are building up is much harder to do than to maintain. You could strength train at a frequency of like, I don't know, maybe a third of what you typically train at and your strength would more or less stay the same. You would never make any progress, but you probably wouldn't really decrease all that much either. Now, that's not necessarily a good thing because there are benefits to just regular exercise aside from how much you lift in the gym or how big your biceps might be. So it still has to be regular no matter what. And, you know, you can talk to biology if if you want to just argue that one but that's the way it is the important thing to realize here is that it establishes this that we can't just give up when we can't forget about it we've got to keep it rolling now the trick is to find a way to keep it going and that's what we're going to talk about here so goal setting here goal setting is something that's often talked about and mentioned you've got to set goals you use the smart goal system or you know so and so's goal system or whatever acronyms you want to use and you set goals. Okay, I want to lose 10 pounds in three months by doing X, Y, Z every day and whatever. Great. But it's easy at the beginning because the goal is obvious to us. It was the thing that got you up off the couch, got you to Google the gym nearest your house. It was very, it was just intuitive. And now it's not as easy because you had not been a quote unquote gym person. It's not obvious to you that you just keep exercising for, for, for forever. So now that you've lost that 10 pounds, where do we go from here? This is where the goal setting, in my opinion, becomes even more important. I've thought about this and broken it up into a few different categories where there is a lot of overlap as far as how we can think about continuing to set goals from here on out. The first is the clearest and most obvious, and that would be the continued pursuit of performance. Now, this can be as simple as strength improvements. That is a division of performance, if you will. Strength improvements can come by, you set a goal to hit a certain number on a squat, on a bench press, on a deadlift, on a shoulder press, pull up, whatever movement you want. You say, okay, my squat today is 200 pounds for five reps. I want to be able to do 250 pounds for five reps by the end of six months or you know whatever is realistic for you. That's an easy one. And then you work towards that. You set your training up to get that. Another way to do this would be a cardio goal. You could sign up for a 5K race or a marathon or a half marathon, a triathlon, whatever it is, and pick goals based on cardiovascular activities. It could be a sprint. A sprint is not really cardio, but you get what I mean. A sprint on the rowing machine. You want to hit um, you know, 1,000 meters in under... I actually don't even know what a good time would be, but a thousand meters in under a certain amount of time, you test whatever you get, and then you try and beat that over the next three months. And so you structure your training over improving your performance. 
Now, the point of this is that it gives you something that's very tangible and very measurable and a little bit of motivation to get in the gym every day. You're not going to the gym just for the sake of being healthy and moving around because you know it's good for you. Although that is happening and that is true, that is not really a strong motivation unless you've had some sort of health scare or health concern in the past. But if you're relatively healthy, which I hope that you are, that's not really a strong enough motivation. Now, thinking about if I can get in the gym and improve my squat, that's going to be strong motivation or at least strong enough and give you something to aim at every day that you're there. Another another way to do this could be like choosing uh, like random exercises or the pursuit of a skill, if you will. You might want to learn how to do a muscle up or get your first pull up. It would be kind of strength, kind of skill. Learn how to uh, do a, a handstand walk or like a, you know a dragon fly, f- flag exercise or you know pick like this is where some of those those fancy Instagram exercises you might see come in handy and it's not because they're good things to train and by fancy I mean like you know balancing on something or doing some like weird contorted movement with your body like that's not a good way to train but it is an expression of strength so if you are somehow motivated by that you see some guy do some crazy thing with his body a backflip even and you're like I want to be able to do that like going to the gym and just practicing backflips for an hour wouldn't really be a good use of your time but if you want to train your body to be able to do a backflip with the skill as well as the physical prerequisites to be able to do that, that would be something worth pursuing and at least gives you, again, something to aim at, which is the most important part of being able to make this thing a now until forever thing. The next sort of category that I can think of, this is this is one that you have to be a little bit careful with because there's possibility of some negative repercussions but if you do it carefully you know there's there's never negative repercussions and that would just be the pursuit of improved or different aesthetics now this can go basically two ways either extremely lean or extremely big and maybe both right this is kind of getting into that more bodybuilding category now the reason why this can be good is because again, it's something to aim at. If you've gotten pretty lean, you've gotten down your 10, 15 pounds, say you're a male, you're, you know, you hit like 13% body fat and you say, okay, I want to get to 8% body fat. Great. That might not be like the most sustainable thing for you to do forever, but maybe you just want to do it to do it. Or maybe, you know, you've put on 10 pounds of muscle and say, okay, I want to put on seven more pounds of muscle because I'm at, you know, I weigh 193 and I want to hit 200 just so the scale says 200, but I don't want to gain any more body fat. That is there's a perfectly reasonable goal. The The danger, quote unquote danger of this goal is then you run into possibility of eating disorders, drug and steroid use and abuse, um, and just problems with chasing that aesthetic and marrying your self-worth to it, which is not good. Now, I'm not recommending that you go extreme or that you do this or do either one of those. It's just an option. What I'm doing is presenting options. So it's something to think about. You don't have to do any of these. You can do all of them. You wouldn't be able to do all of them at once, but you could You could do all of them over time, and I'm going to get to that in a second. So the pursuit of improved or changing aesthetics, completely valid. There is nothing wrong with going to the gym to want to look better. It is not often the strongest motivator up front. Up front, it is not often the strongest motivator because it's... It's not internalized enough. However, once you've kind of got all your ducks in a row, you're you're good with your with your relationship with your body, with your relationship with food, you're good with your nutrition, you're good with sleep, you're good with the lifestyle, and you say, Okay, I just want like big shoulders now. Okay. Great. As long as you're you know, you know, the first stop you make after you do that is is to the the steroid dealer, then <laughs> then you're okay. And same as, as you want to get like super lean, you maybe you want to book a photo shoot for yourself just to have like super lean photos to put a date on it and give a little bit extra incentive. Great. But the first thing you do shouldn't be to stop eating all food, right? It should just always be a healthy approach and, you know, holistic and all that stuff just to qualify all of these things. So don't, don't, I don't want anyone to say, you know, I said, go out there and get super shredded or get super big at the expense of all other things. It's just an option as a, something to pursue for a period of time. Now, the last kind of category and this kind of goes hand in hand with the performance as well, a little bit, um, the, the pursuit of skill for, for sport or for performance outside of the gym, 
golf is probably the easiest one to think of because it's the one that most people as we age lean towards. And especially now, like in the summertime here in Canada, like lots of people are golfing and lots of people go to the gym for golf or maybe I'll rant a little bit here about, about the golfers and I apologize, but golf is not exercise. If you're not, even if you're like older and have big mobility issues, like golf is not exercise. It is, it is a sport where, yeah, you've got to swing the club. Like you can tell me that you walked the course, but like you probably didn't. And if you did and you had four beers, well then, okay, great. Nobody has ever got in shape from playing golf and that's okay. I'm not like shitting on golf. I don't love golf, but that's okay. I don't, it just doesn't mean I don't love it for you. You do your thing. I know people who, who can barely move. They can bar- like literally barely move. Like going for a walk for more than seven, eight minutes is a, a, a terrible task for them. And they can still golf. So if you're telling me that like, oh, golf is great exercise. I stopped going to the gym because I'm golfing. Like, no, that's, that's, that ain't it. However, if you want to go to the gym to improve your golf game, you want to straighten out your posture, get a little bit stronger, get a little bit more rotational power through your hips and through your core and through your shoulders, all that stuff. Yeah, definitely golf or definitely the gym can support that. And this goes for all the other sports to a lesser degree. Cause like if you're playing tennis for a couple hours, you're playing basketball for a few hours, like, yeah, you're getting, getting a lot of cardio, you're getting a lot of movement in, there's some explosiveness there and all that other stuff. So it's a little bit different, but uh, I'm just, I just had to go in on the, on the golfers a little bit. Cause I always find it, I always find it funny. The excuse, oh, I'm not going to the gym because I'm going to go golf instead. Like, eh, it's not like do whatever you want, obviously, but it, it's not the same. Anyways, enough of that. If if that if you find an activity that's like that, that's like, okay, this is the reason to go to the gym so I can improve my golf game, great. By all means, that's a, that's a wonderful thing. And so find find things to do that. The best way would be to really internalize very deeply, and this would be the most difficult way as well, that working out is for the rest of your life. It is for longevity and is for your well-being from now until the day that you die. But that's not tangible or measurable and as far as like the goal setting thing is, you can't just be like, okay, three months from now, I'm going to be still healthy. That's great, but you're already healthy. You didn't like accomplish something. I mean, you accomplished something, but you didn't hit a goal because it's just the same thing. So, however, maintenance is progress at a, to a degree. So hard to internalize, but, it, but important, if you will. Now, as I mentioned with like the cycling through these goals, because the same thing will continue to happen, Right. If I say that I want to work on my squat, my squat was at whatever we said before, 200, and it's going to go up to 250 pounds. Well, what happens after that? Because then we got to we gotta redo this process. One thing to realize is this. In the beginning, you have the greatest potential for change, right? You have the greatest potential to add strength, to add muscle size, to add abilities, et cetera, et cetera. As time goes on, as, t- as you get more fit, as you get stronger, as you get bigger, as you get whatever, the the potential for change becomes less and less. So your gains will come a lot slower. It is conceivable to add two or three hundred pounds to you know your big lifts within a year or two of lifting. If that rate of progression maintained, there would be people who could deadlift like. 10,000 pounds, but it, it, it doesn't. So, you know, you've got to fight for every little bit more gain and that's okay. But what that also means is that you need to make sacrifices to make those gains. So if your squat, you know, you 200 to 250. Okay. But now you want your squat to go from, oh, whatever, 450 to 500. That's a very different thing. And so because it's much harder, other things have to fall by their side. Your cardio may suffer. Maybe you're not benching as much. And so your bench press goes down while your squat goes up because that's the thing that you chose to focus on. And that's okay. Unless you're a power lifter or an athlete or something where you've got to, you know, keep all your, keep everything up at the highest, then then that's not okay. But if you're an athlete, that's, you know, you're not doing that, obviously. If you're just a regular person, you you might sacrifice your bench press for your squat or, or the other way around. You might sacrifice your squat for your bench press. Now, that sounds like it kind of sucks because you've got to like put other things aside so that you can work on the things that you choose to work on. The beauty of this is that once you hit that squat goal, now you hit that 500 pound squat. Maybe now you shift your focus back to bench press because your bench press has suffered. 
what this also can mean is that your bench press suffers, so it goes down. But it's not like you stopped working out, you're still in shape, you probably did some pressing, but just not enough. You can get some like some newbie gains. This is not real, but like you can kind of get some some newbie gains again. So you get that rate of progression back up. You get you get to build up your bench press quite quickly until you get to like that point, maybe a little bit past where you were previously, and then you're like really fighting for every pound. But if you haven't bench pressed in four months, of course your bench is going to be a little bit less, but you get to you get to ride ride that wave up uh, quite quickly, which is which can be fun. And this is sometimes you'll see uh, trainers or people online or fitness people, influencers, whatever, who seem to always be like, oh, I'm bulking or I'm cutting. I'm focusing on a marathon. I'm focusing on bench press. And this is why they do these things is because it just, we got to get singularly focused on one aspect of it. And it's for no reason other than curiosity or I just want to. And yeah, I know that my cardio is going to suffer. I know that my squat's going to suffer, but like right now, for whatever reason, I'm interested in improving my bench press, then great. I I know how to build my squat back up and it's not like I'm losing the ability to squat or not going to squat at all. I'll still do it as a part of like regular healthy life, but it's going to, it's going to, it's going to suffer at the, at the benefit of my bench press going up. And I think I maybe I switched examples in the middle of that. But because it gets harder and harder, you have some trade-offs. And so you lean into these trade-offs to kind of choose your next goal. You want to pursue strength. Okay, your cardio is probably going to suffer. So after you hit that strength goal, then you switch to a cardio goal. That cardio goal comes up, your cardio goal goes up, but now your muscle mass has suffered. So you switch back to a hypertrophy goal. Now you build up some muscle mass again, your cardio suffered, your strength has gone down because you're just getting pumped up, but you realize you can't do any pull-ups anymore. So now you want to go in to do pull-ups and, and then this cycle just continues for forever. So while the trade-offs like kind of suck because you don't want to like regress on anything, on the other hand, it gives you your next goal. So, you know, to try and find the silver lining in it, that's, that's one way that I think about it that I find to be very helpful is I'm going to focus on this now, this is going to suffer, but then the next goal will be bringing back up that thing that suffered. And then you just, you know, rinse and repeat this basically for forever because like we said fitness is a now until forever thing another thing to mention with this is that you shouldn't prematurely take time off the gym just because you feel like you've been going hard for a while or from some predetermined amount of time because the natural seasons of life are going to take you away from the gym you move cities you start a new job you have a kid, you, you know, whatever stuff, stuff happens, good, bad, or otherwise. And it's going to take you away from the gym against your will. When that stuff happens, that's okay. You roll with it and you, and you deal with the things of life and you get back when you can, but doing so in advance of this, just because, Oh, I've been training hard for four months. So I'm not going to go to the gym for the next two months. Well, what happens if after those two months, something in your life happens and now you're out of the gym for another six months. Now you've been out of the gym for eight months. So now, you know, you've lost a lot and and it's not like we're not making trade-offs here as far as our physical fitness. We're just, everything is going down and that's not what you want. Now, these things are going to happen in life. And so you roll with the punches and you just get back up and keep going, but you don't want to cut yourself off before you have to. So keep that in mind that like a a day is coming where you're going to have to take time off the gym and that's okay. It's part of, part of life and part of going through this whole thing. Just don't do it sooner than it has to be and, and keep it going, right? Don't don't manufacture the trade-offs for things that are not gym-related. Now, my suggestion and the way that I program a lot of stuff um, for myself and for most of my clients after a certain amount of time is this. After you've hit your kind of like initial goal, the way that I is it that I think is a natural progression is to, you know, once you've been going to the gym, you, you find out what you like and what you don't like. And of course you can't just do only the stuff that you like and never do the stuff you don't like. It's all got to be mixed in there, but you know, you don't have to do stuff you hate. Like if you absolutely hate a certain exercise, you literally don't have to do that exercise. You can do other stuff that is similar or getting you know close to the same effect. So the suggestion is this. Once you've been going to the gym for a while, you're, you know, you're looking to pick a new goal. You're not sure how to go about it. Pick two to four exercises that you enjoy and that you want to focus on. 
one exercise at least has to be a lower body and one exercise has to be an upper body. And then the other two can be whatever you want. It would be nice to do two and two or two and one doesn't matter, but at least one upper and one lower, just so we're staying balanced. No skipping leg day. With these exercises, you program the rest of your training around that. So your goal is to improve that exercise. Let's say you pick a squat and you pick a bench press. We'll keep going with those same two examples. So all of my training is going to be focused around improving my squat and improving my bench press as it you know simply would be. Now, other things might suffer again, as we talked about these, these trade-offs, but at least I've got something to aim at rather than just going into the gym. The way the programming would work would be one, refining the mechanics of those movements. Because when you start to use these like bigger movements and you're starting to get really focused on them, your specific technique actually has a lot to do with it. Yes, pure strength matters, of course, but also your technique. So step one would be refine your technique as much as you can. And then you start to load up and add reps and load up and add reps and load up and you know continue this accumulation intensification alternating phases until you hit whatever goal that you set out for yourself. Um, the reason also to pick big exercises is because they're simpler to progress and simpler to program around. For example, picking bicep curls and, uh, like calf raises wouldn't be too good exercises to pick because there's not enough other stuff to support it. And it's not really like big enough weight. You want to pick exercises that are the compound exercises, probably something with a barbell or if there's a type of machine that you like or, uh, you know, a heavier dumbbell exercise, a one arm row, a chest press, a goblet squat, something like that. Just don't pick small exercises because it just doesn't work that well from the programming and from like, you might get excited about bicep curls, but you get excited about like the way your bicep looks like you don't really get all that jacked up and the progression will be so much slower just because they are smaller muscles. It might take you weeks to move up five pounds in a bicep curl. Uh, it shouldn't take you weeks to move up five pounds on a, on a squat unless you're at a certain level, of course, all of the nuance uh, forever, but, uh, yeah, pick, pick big compound exercises for that. And I think that's a really good way to go. And you continue to program that you set a goal for yourself. I want to do this until I hit X. Once you hit X, you reevaluate and then you let it keep going for forever because that's what this is. So to sum this up, get curious, look into what goals or what things you might find interesting. You see someone doing it. You see someone doing something in a gym or, or online. Think, oh, that would be cool. I would, I would like to do that. I'd like to be that strong. Think about things that are realistic. And you know, by realistic, if your squat is currently 200 pounds, don't pick a goal of 500 pounds. So you can maybe do that if you want to look like really far out, but that's a little bit too far in the future. Pick goals that are in the three to six month range of achievability, because that's enough amount of time to commit to and commit to the foreseeable future scheduling wise and whatnot. If you need to commit to something for the next four years, like you don't know what's happening in the next four years. So commit to some, commit to things in that kind of three to six month range. Also, don't be afraid to ask for help. This is, this might seem counterintuitive, but as well as, or like I said, with the goal setting, this is where coaching even comes in a little bit more because the potential for change is less. So training has to get more specific and things have to get a little bit more dialed in. And so just like a beginner can go to the gym and basically just do anything and they'll get stronger. Someone who's more advanced, if they're not doing the right things, they might actually regress. And that would be quite a shame. So all that being said, if you're at this stage or nearing this stage or just need a little bit more direction, send me a message and we'll work together on this, whatever your goals are, danielyors.com slash coaching. Um, the link will be in the show notes as well as, as per usual. Um, but either way, just like send me messages. If you have questions, you're not sure whether your goal is realistic or not. You're not sure you want me to like evaluate your training plan, whatever, whatever I can do to help out you send me a message and let me know. And, um, and we'll find a way to get you on the right track and, um, and keep this thing rolling for forever. I don't know how many times I can say that, but that's, that's what it is now until forever, baby. We're still on YouTube. We've got the videos going again. Something weird has been going on with that light, which has been quite distracting, but that's okay. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, uh, share this with a friend, share the podcast with a friend, rating, review, iTunes, Spotify, all the places. Follow me on Instagram at Daniel Yoris. Questions, comments, concerns, always feel free to message me wherever. And, um, and that's it. Hope you enjoyed this one. Share it with someone who needs it. Reach out if you need any help and uh, we'll chat soon.